If you use chemicals in construction, you got to check this out. This is a live safety demonstration presented to you by the University of Colorado at Boulder. The purpose of this demonstration is to explain some of the hazards that arise from using common construction chemicals and to explain one of the many necessary control procedures to reduce workers' exposures to hazardous chemicals. It is no doubt that construction work is dangerous and full of safety hazards. The 2014 report from the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that 19% of all occupational fatalities occurred in the construction industry alone. Safety hazards basically are any condition in the work environment that have the potential to cause injury to workers. Safety hazards may arise at any time in the construction project for a number of reasons. The more obvious hazards range from falls from roofs, collapsing of trench walls, and being struck by mobile equipment on site. Now, many construction hazards may be obvious, but many may remain hidden. One of the often hidden hazards in construction is chemicals. Chemical hazards may be colorless and odorless vapors, which remain hidden until it's too late. Construction accidents can result in injuries ranging from first aid to lost time to even death. But for any of these injuries to occur, they must be a result of the release of some form of energy source. One of these energy sources is chemical energy. Chemical energy is released through chemical reactions. The chemical energy is energy that is stored in the bonds of chemical compounds, which are also known as atoms and molecules. This energy is released in a chemical reaction, which often produces heat as a byproduct. Batteries, petroleum, natural gas, and coal are all examples of stored chemical energy. Chemical energy, which is released through chemical reactions, can be released in two main ways. These are intentional release and unintentional release. Intentional release can occur by applying chemicals to the work process, like painting a wall or degreasing a mechanical component. On the other hand, unintentional release occurs when chemicals are spilled, when chemicals leak from pipes or other types of storage vessels, and also the misapplication of chemical products, like mixing two of the wrong chemicals together or applying the wrong chemical to the work surface. The majority of chemical exposures occur through contact with the body. This can occur by direct contact with the skin or by the absorption of chemicals into the bloodstream. Chemicals may also enter the body by breathing them into the lungs. This process is known as inhalation. Chemical vapors, which are the fumes that rise off of chemicals, are dangerous to the body once inhaled. Usually, once chemical energy is released from a substance, that substance is transformed into an entirely new substance. A good example of this transformation through chemical reaction is a campfire. Dry wood is a storehouse of chemical energy. As your campfire burns, chemical energy is released and converted into thermal energy, making both heat and light. This chemical reaction transforms the firewood into ashes and smoke, which are entirely new substances. One of the more dangerous and commonly overlooked construction chemicals is known as methylene chloride. Methylene chloride is best known as a commercially available paint remover and stripper. Methylene chloride has been responsible for many deaths in construction, most of these occurring in combined spaces. Once methylene chloride is applied to a painted surface, a chemical reaction occurs that causes the paint to break down. As you can see in the video, this paint actually starts to bubble after application. This reaction allows the painted surface to be stripped and the paint to be removed. Let's move on to the steps necessary for reducing the likelihood of injury when working with hazardous chemicals. Certain environmental testing and control procedures, along with personal protective equipment requirements, are just a few of the typical guidelines that have been set for employee protection. One of these environmental control procedures is known as forced air ventilation. Forced air ventilation is a method used to ventilate work areas. Forced air ventilation works by forcing clean air into a space with a blower fan motor. By forcing clean air into the space and contaminated air out, you can reduce the buildup of toxic chemical vapors. Now that you're familiar with forced air ventilation and how it works, let's see it happen in the next video. This plexiglass cube is presented in this video to simulate a workspace without adequate ventilation. 
Now, many construction chemical reactions may be colorless and impossible to see with the naked eye, such as paint strippers. For that reason, a dry ice and water mixture is used here to create a fog that fills the space inside the plexiglass box. The fog you are seeing in this video is a chemical reaction that occurs when dry ice contacts water. This mixture and reaction was selected so you can actually see how chemical vapor concentrations can be decreased by applying forced air ventilation to a simulated workspace. Stay safe, and as always, have a great day.